Hello and welcome to today's webcast. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I'm from Redback Conferencing. Today we're joined by Trish Springsteen and she is going to inspire us all on the wonderful world of speaking and presenting online. Welcome Trish, how are you today? Absolutely fine. It's Thank great you. to have you here and it's also just a little secret, it's Trish's birthday <laughs> today as well. So even more excited to have you here and we'll make sure it's worthwhile, trust me. Absolutely worthwhile, it'll be absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Excellent. And I'd just like to um, just explain a little bit about Trish before we get into it. Um, she is well known within the circuit. She's appeared on a number of radio stations. You even have your own radio station. She's written for a number of print magazines. And she's also worked with some of Australia's largest organisations as well. Also written a number book of books um, and also uh, e-books and blogs. And she's also won a lot of awards. So we're very excited to have you here today. We know you've been around and we know that you've seen the best and worse when it comes to presentations and online events. <laughs> yes. So can you please just give us um, a little bit of an idea as to what we're going to cover in the next 40 minutes? Oh, absolutely. Yep. We're going to zoom through because nice. we have an awful lot to cover, Sarah, Excellent. an awful lot. But the things we're going to look at in the next 40 minutes, what's stopping you from getting up and doing a webinar or getting up and speaking? Uh, things about how the foundation of what you're going to look is knowing your audience and your niche. Mm how to organise that presentation, finding your story and leveraging it, and looking at the power of storytelling because that's where it is today, and speaking for success online. What tips and things that I can give you today that you can take away straight away to do some speaking for success, and then how you can add passion to your message to make sure that it reaches the people you want. So we've got a lot to get through. Excellent, so let's get straight into it. What actually stops people from presenting and sharing their message? I think we have no issue when we're in day-to-day -day conversation and we're talking about it, but what stops people from actually wanting to get up and that whole fear? And that's right, it, uh, <laughs> you said that word. It's fear. It's the fear of the unknown. Mm. It's the fear of people are going to think that I uh, don't know what I'm going to be saying. It's mm. the fear of what their peers might be going to say. It's the fear that people are going to find out maybe I don't know as much. And that's what stops people from getting up, stops people from speaking offline, and can help really stop people from doing webinars and speaking online. Now, how do we overcome that? Well, these are some of the strategies that you can look at. We can't go into detail on in all of them because, hey, we only got 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. But one of the things is what I call experience and familiarisation. Because it's often that fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. if we get more experience and more familiar with the actual act of speaking, mm -hmm. the actual act of doing some webinars, then the fact that uh, it takes away that fear of the unknown then. We know that, well, we did it, when we did the first one and mm. nothing happened, we didn't fall into a heap and no one threw tomatoes at us, so the next one will be a little bit easier and yep. the next one will be a little bit easier. Preparation and practice is probably the two things that are paramount to being able to get up and do that speaking mm. and going on to online. Now, I'm not saying that you need to memorise everything you're going to be saying word perfect because mm. that's when the problem happens. Mm. But if you do some preparation and if you put some practice into it and that's knowing how long you're going to be speaking, mm. who you're going to be speaking to, what medium you're going to be speaking using either webinars or personal speaking, videos, mm -hmm. all of those, then because they all have subtle differences which we're mm. going to touch a little bit on today, then that's going to give you what I call taking away that Murphy's Law. Mm. More preparation and practice that you've got if something goes wrong, you've got backups. You know how to fix it. You know how to fix it. And then the biggest thing I think that really stops a lot of people, Sarah, and it's one that we can really get and work over, is mm. that little mindset, that little voice in our heads that mm. says, oh no, mm. I can't do this. It's all going to go wrong. It's not going to work. Have you all had that? Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people out mm. there who are nodding with me and so are you. Yeah. We all get that yep. every now and then. But what we need to do is stop it. Yep. We need to not let that rule what we're doing mm. and not let that stop us from shining and sharing our message. And there's a few techniques that you can do with that. I actually visualise a red stop sign. Whenever I start to hear that negativity in my mm. voice, that red stop sign says, stop, Yep. we're not going down this spiral, and I replace it with a positive thought. 
Yeah. I am good. I am awesome. And people want to hear me. Yeah. So you use some of those things. And then the last bit there is breathing and relaxation. Breathing is not only essential to life, and I'm sure you'll be very surprised to find that out, but it's also essential to speaking mm. because that's where our breath comes from. And what happens when we're nervous, which actually can impact very much on webinars and online, is we drop our chin down here and we don't have the air that comes out. Our voice gets very breathy. We stop. We can't mm. get the words out. And so it doesn't come across as confident as we want. And people tend to speak a lot faster, don't they, when that happens? I find there's a lot of people who speak fast and it's almost like, slow down, take a breath and speak like you would be having a conversation. That's right. When we're nervous mm. and we don't really want to be there, we want to get those words out very mm. quickly. Yeah. And the okay. problem with that is people can't understand us. Mm. So I want you to remember that you have a voice. Mm. You have a voice, you have a message. Get over that fear. Use some of those things I've just talked to you about. Realise that if you don't get up and speak, if you don't share your message on a webinar, then, as I say to a lot of my mentoring clients, you're being selfish. Mm. And do you really want to be selfish? Because, you know, in that message that you might be sharing, there could be just something that you might have to say. One word, mm. a sentence, a paragraph that could change somebody who's listening. Mm. It could be something that they need and it could change their life. So if you don't use your voice, then how do you know you're not stopping someone else from using their voice? That's very true and I think there's been situations where I've been an attendee, whether it's at a live event, listening to someone or actually on an online event, and I just walk away with one or two things that I can apply and I find that, okay, that's half an hour or an hour well spent of my time and I actually quite like providing that feedback to the mm. presenter afterwards and even just letting them know what I've learned I find that okay I've now done the good thing you know it's almost like a two-way communication channel then so I think that's very important look those presenters would be valuing yeah. that feedback because yeah. it is important it lets them know mm. that they're actually reaching someone and that their message is being validated yes. and that's what I meant by you've just given me a great example mm. of depriving someone from those words yeah. if you are selfish and let that fear stop you from getting up and sharing your message. And then there's some presenters I learn nothing from, but we won't go into the <laughs> negative. Um, okay, well, hey, maybe they haven't quite hit the right that's message. That's another there. topic for another day. So when it does come to this, Trish, um, what is that one thing that you think is vitally important to remember when you're presenting, whether it is in a face-to-face -face capacity where there's 100 people and you'll picture them all in their underwear or whether it is behind the camera? Because I personally think it can be a little bit more daunting behind the camera when you don't have that feedback. So <laughs> what should you be remembering as you're presenting in those types of environments? Okay. The foundation of everything you do, mm. the absolute foundation. And if you get this right, people, then everything else sort of comes a lot easier and builds on it, mm. uh, is your niche. And I call it a micro niche. And when you're speaking, it's knowing your audience. Mm. Now, if you don't get that right, then putting your structure together, uh, finding out what you're doing, it all makes it very much harder. Now, if you can get exactly who you're going to be speaking to, take some time to find out who your customers are, what, their niche, what that niche is, what that micro niche is for you. Find out who your audience is, who you're going to be speaking to. Mm. Then what does happens then is that you can use the language mm. that's going to connect you with your audience. Okay. You can put together the presentation that you need mm. that's going to connect you with your audience. If you don't do that, then you could find yourself using language, mm. speaking, and it's not going to be, it's going to be missing the mark. Yeah. You could be using language that people who you're speaking to at that particular time, they don't understand it. Mm. And as this cartoon represents, I love this cartoon, it's, you know, can you tolerate ambiguity? Ambiguity mm. is not a good question. And really, even without that, can your audiences tolerate a speaker either on a webinar or in person who has no idea where they're going, hasn't really researched what they're mm. going to be doing, 
hasn't actually connected with that audience and is losing the, using language mm. that's not connecting with them, are you going to go along with that speaker? Yeah. Probably not. Are you going to listen to that webinar or online presentation mm. all the way through? Probably not. And, and I think it's that. important as well when you're in whatever environment you're in, if I was uh, there watching a speaker at a conference to get up and walk out, I would be a little bit embarrassed. So I'd probably sit there on my phone or something. But these days, all you need to do is close your browser, don't you? There's not that embarrassing moment as someone watching you. So as a presenter, it's like, God, I really need to try hard and I really need to know who I'm speaking to because it's so easy for people to disengage and to leave the, the room, really. Absolutely, it is. And that's one of the that's one of the big things about webinars and online. Mm. At least, as you say, in person, they probably won't quite walk out yeah. on you. But when you're doing something on a webinar online presentation, they don't even have to close their browser down. Mm. They could just get up and walk away yeah. and leave the webinar going and you don't know. So you need to make sure that you've got that foundation. Mm. And this is one of my favourite quotes. If you can't write your message in a sentence, you can't say it in an hour. And that means wow. you need to be really, really mm. on point as to what you want these people to take away in the time that they've given up to spend with you. Yep. And so in terms of doing that, um, and we spoke about this earlier, even through the process of having people register for today's event, um, we asked people why they were joining and what they wanted to learn. As a presenter, was that valuable for no to know that information about who was joining beforehand? And so people online watching now, is that something that, that they can be doing when they are organising their events? So then you're passing that information to your presenter? That was extremely valuable mm. information and it's part of what I'm saying about knowing your niche and yep. knowing your audience. A few questions beforehand, similar to what you've done mm. or even putting out a little bit of a poll yep. or even just going onto your Facebook group yeah. and saying, look, I'm going to be doing a webinar, it's about this, what in things are you interested in, what would mm. you like to have me cover? That means then that you're producing valuable information mm. for people who've given up valuable time and you have now got a solid foundation yep. to build your presentation on. Excellent. And so that is a very, very important part. Mm. Also to be aware that you can't cover everything yeah. all in one webinar. Yep. And as you'll see as we go along, if you try and do that, it's going to be a bit of a mishmash. Mm. You're going to overwhelm people with too much information and the absolute valuable time that you've got with some people, you've wasted. Yeah. It's really hard to cut through, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's not easy. Yeah. Believe me, I have so much information that I could share and I looked at those outcomes yeah. and I thought there was so much in those outcomes that some of it we can't even cover today, mm. unfortunately, but I'm hoping to pull some of it in for you. Great. And that's what this is about is you need to know your purpose and where you want to go. Mm. Whenever you're doing any presentation, whether it's online or off, mm -hmm. the questions you need to ask is, at this particular time, yep. with this particular audience, what is it that I want them to take away? Mm. What is the goal, what is the outcome that I want at the end of the time, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 40 minutes, or an hour and a half, what is it that at the end of that time, those people can walk away and, with that information? Mm. Now, if you don't get the answer to that, if you don't, have that firmly in your mm. mind, then everything else that you're going to be doing makes it so much difficult. Yep. If you start wandering around in the wilderness, mm. you'll take your audience with you because they'll follow you. Yes. And if they're following you in the wilderness, they're going to go, where am What's I? What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? So if you have a direction and they follow you in the direction and it's clear cut, then they're a lot more relaxed and ready to take on your information. And I guess that talks to this That's slide. what this is. <laughs> yep. No idea what he said. Yeah. And I'm so hoping that you're going to know exactly what I was saying. Just say to me, there was a lovely lady in purple that I just watched for 40 minutes. And I want you to say, and at the end of that 40 minutes, I knew exactly where she was taking me yeah. and I took some information away. You don't want to be the panda, do you? Oh, the panda's That's the nice. key takeaway. <laughs> That's the key takeaway. Do not be the panda. No pandas. <laughs> so 
Um, when you're presenting and you've been asked to present somewhere, whether it is online or in a face-to-face -face capacity, you then um, put together your PowerPoint, you know what key takeaways you want to do, you know what design you want to have, you want to make it look nice. How do you decide on what to include in that? Because I think what you think you should include and what you should be including, I'm sure you're about to enlighten us, <laughs> might be two completely different things. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Look. As we said, you need to know your foundation. So mm. doing some of those questions at the beginning is going to give you a bit of an idea what people want yep. and what you're going to be doing. Now, we're all subject matter experts. Every single one of you sitting there watching this is a subject matter expert. Now, the problem of being a subject matter expert is that you know a lot about your mm. subject. Yep. Unfortunately, for some people, what they want to do is give all of it at mm. once. Unfortunately then, if you try and do that, you're going to overwhelm yep. your audience. So there's a couple of things you need to do. Brainstorm what you've got and what you know based around the foundation and the outcome that you want people to take. Now when you do that brainstorming, you're going to come up probably with a list maybe about that much. Mm -hmm. Now if you can see on the slide here, taking just a 10 minute presentation is a foundation. In any 10 minute presentation, you can really only get three, three main facts across. Yep. That means that that pile of information you've got is too much. Yep. So you need to reduce that to the three main facts. Now I know people are out there going to say, okay Trish, how do I do that? Mm. Which ones are the most important? Well, I use a little bit of a scenario in mm -hmm. my mind. I imagine that if I'm going in to talk to a CEO of a company and I've got 10 minutes of his time, so I've worked out some important things mm -hmm. I want to talk to him about, then if I end up coming to there and his assistant says to me, sorry, he's very busy, you've only got one minute of his time, mm. at that stage I've got to throw out most of my presentation mm. and I've got to say to him the one most important thing that I can give him in one minute. When you look through that list you've got, if you think about that, there'll be something that will come out of that list will be, this is the one thing that I want them to take away. Mm. That becomes your first point. Yep. And then you just run through that scenario for your second point and your third point. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that, then they're the three main things. Knowing that those three main things are going to support the goal that you want, mm. the outcome you want. Well, that's, that's what I find um, a lot of people don't think about. They start from the beginning and they don't sort of, would you recommend working backwards in terms of understanding what you want to achieve, what people want to walk away with, but also what you, what's your goal? Because we're not just doing this for fun, are we? We actually should have a goal as a presenter or some kind of call to action. That's right. Yep. Look, if you don't know what you want and the outcome that you want mm. your people to take away, you can't even get to what we've just done. Yeah. So you had that goal, and you know that this is where I want to take you. Yep. You've worked out from all that immense information as a subject matter expert, the three things that you want to talk about mm. in that 10 minute presentation. Then you put together your speech. Yep. Now, what we've got here is the basics of a speech. And I'm sure most people will be aware of it, uh, actually, I love the, the quote that I come to where people ask me how to do that. Uh, comes from one of my, what I arguably think is one of the greatest orators of last century, which was Sir Winston Churchill. Mm. He was a brilliant speaker. And they asked him how did he put together those speeches. Mm. And he said, first, I tell them what I want to tell them. Mm -hmm. Then I tell them. And then I tell them what I've just told them, which is opening, body and conclusion. Mm. Okay. Then we have this issue, where do we start? Mm. Where do you think we should start, Sarah? Well, judging by the slides, <laughs> <laughs> am I cheating? <laughs> no, because that slide is tricky. Well, I would assume if I, when I do um, create a presentation, like I just said, I do like working backwards because then I can put, okay, here are the key takeaways that yep. I want people to take away. How do I want to have a conversation around that and discuss that and then at the beginning that's where I sort of set the agenda and set the scene without going into it in too much detail. Mm -hmm. So where would you start? At the conclusion. At the conclusion. Yep. No. 
Oh. <laughs> and actually, it's a bit of a trick question because most people will either pick the opening or the conclusion. Mm. But if you listen to what I just said from Sir Winston mm. Churchill, first I tell them what I'm going to tell them. Mm. Then I tell them. Then I tell them what I've just told them. Okay. Now, when you look at that, how can you tell people what you want to tell them? If you don't or know. tell them what you've just told them if you don't tell them. Mm. So the place you actually start is the body. There you go. Because that's your three main points. That's your basic information which is going to take people to the goal that you want. Mm. Okay. So once you've got that, then you can then craft a opening and craft a conclusion. Ah, definitely makes sense. Yeah. So when you come to the opening, there are a couple of things that we mm. do in the opening. And some of these things, mm, some people get the tell people what I'm going to tell them, but not everybody gets the second part, which is catch the audience's attention. Mm. So for a very good opening, you need to have something that's going to say, hey, listen to me, whether it's in a webinar or whether it's on an, a presentation, listen to me for the next 40 minutes mm. or next 15 minutes. Now, that catchy my attention mm. could be a quote, it could be a question, it could be a fact or a statistic. Mm. And that will often come from that body of information that you've put together, oh, okay, which is yep. one of the other reasons why you do that body. Exactly. Yeah. And then the conclusion. Now, I would say roughly 95% of the people that I come across leave out the second part of the conclusion. There's two parts to the conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's construct the conclusion, tell people what you've just told. It's yep. a summary. This part that most people leave out, yep. the call to action. Mm. They do this beautiful presentation, they do a lovely summary, and then they say, thank you for listening to me. See you later. Bye. Yeah. Now, you've got a goal that you set at mm. the beginning that you wanted people to take away. Yep. If you don't do that call to action, then you haven't brought it back to that goal. Mm. And how do you know that you've achieved what you want? Yeah. Now that call to action could merely be, I want you to change your mind, or I want you to think about these information mm. I've given you, or it could be, I want you to go and book my next presentation, I want you to go and buy my book. Mm. It doesn't matter what it is, but for you to know that you've achieved your aim, you need to have that call to action. Yep. And as I said, it's amazing how many people just miss it out. Just miss out. Do you think people are scared to do it? Is it do you think there's a certain element of, oh, well, I've taken, I don't want to bombard people or seem too salesy? Do you think that's the reason why people do it? The call to action doesn't have to be yeah. salesy. People it just really assume doesn't. it is, yeah. don't they? When everybody says, oh, I'll do a call to action, they think, oh, I don't want to sell. Yeah. And you don't have to sell over the top yep. when you're doing it. But let's be realistic, Sarah. Mm. Why are we doing a webinar? Yeah. Why are we doing a webcast? Yeah. Why are we sharing our information? There is a reason we're sharing mm. it. And that call to action is affirming that reason. Now, that reason could be purely information, mm. and that's fine, but you need to have a call to action to say, here's some information I've given you. Yep. My challenge to you is to go and change something or do something with mm. that information. And I guess that can also come into play with um, people out there who are organisers of an event who are joining today on behalf of their presenters, you need to also think about your call to actions, don't you, and how to align that with the presenter because otherwise you could have two call to actions, the organiser might want one, the presenter might want another one and all of a sudden it becomes confusing for the audience, do you think? Absolutely. Mm. And that's where it comes back to that very first thing I said. The very first slide, the question you asked me yeah. is what is the most important after the fear, but what is the most important thing? Mm. The foundation of everything, yeah. what your goal is. Yeah. Now, if a pres people who are an event organiser have a goal, yeah. they want to get people in, they want to get speakers there, mm. they want to get presenters that are going to be aligned to what that goal is. Mm. The presenter, as you say, has a goal. This is where communication comes in, people. Oh, the C word. Uh, the C word. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good idea to talk to each yeah. other yep. and to find out and make sure that your goals and your aims are aligned. So if I'm going to be talking at a conference, I'm going to make sure that my presentation is aligned to the theme of the conference mm. so that 
that meets the goal for the event organiser because Great. I'm presenting along that theme. Excellent. But within my presentation, there will be a call to action as well. Mm. Maybe just to change their thinking. It could be to buy my book. It could be to have a session with me or to go to my presentation. Mm. All of which can be done without being over the top sale. Okay, we're just going to get into a few questions now before we keep going because yeah. we have some coming through. Um, so, first of all, from um, Vico or Zvico, apologies if I've got that wrong, should we always present with slides? Actually, no. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to always present with slides. Now, I will take that with a couple of caveats, right? Mm. It depends what you're doing, mm. it depends where you're speaking. I have a passion for PowerPoint presentations because mm -hmm. I think poor PowerPoint's been really, really done, badly done by yeah. everybody calls it death by PowerPoint. And it's not PowerPoint's fault, it's the presenter's fault. Yeah. However, PowerPoint is extremely good and slides are extremely good because they connect to the audience on another level. Mm. People listen and learn in a variety of ways. They yep. can be auditory, kinetic, uh, kinesthetic, visual. Yep. And slides connect with people with the visual mm. and also the kinetic because it's changing and it's movement. Yeah. However, you don't have to use them if it's not appropriate. Yeah. Webinars, it's a good idea to have slides mm. because otherwise you've got to carry that whole time just with your voice. It can be a bit much. If you've got a video and you're doing videos and you're doing online presentations, your slides probably don't come in because you would be connecting with people with the video and it'll be almost like one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Um, and one from David. So Trish, what was your catch at the start of your presentation? <laughs> ah, my catch we have to wait and see. At the start of my presentation. Yep. Well, that was actually setting the story of who I was yep. and the credibility because I'm talking about speaking and I'm talking about speaking online. Mm. So I was setting a bit of a story about my presentation. Mm -hmm. And I guess my catch was the fear bit because mm. to me, that's what stops people. Yep. So I'm grabbing you with that fear and I was grabbing you with that, I guess, that are you selfish? Mm. Well, it does make everyone question that and ask mm. themselves a question, which I think is quite engaging. Um, but then we'll go into um, some other ways that we can also grab people, yep. with, um, especially within the online platform. So also, um, what do you do if you notice that your audience is losing attention? Um, and I guess this can be a lot harder online than what it is face to face. It is harder mm. online because you don't always know that yeah. you've lost their attention. Yep. However, what I would say is if you do the proper preparation with your webinar, then you can limit the possibility of that happening. Mm. That means having good slides mm -hmm. that uh, will keep people's attention, nothing that's overwhelming them, so you don't want too much information. Mm. Then you want your good voice, That we're going to talk about that shortly, about how you actually present which means that your voice and the connection you make with mm. them is going to hold them there, that you're not speaking too fast or too slow. Yeah. Offline, it's a change of state. It's being aware mm. and connected with your audience. So you get a feeling as a speaker if people are starting to get a bit restless. Mm. And then I would move. I would make a change. I would pop a question. I might mm. change the format that I'm doing. I might start some more interaction yeah. with the audience. And from Kristen, recommended maximum duration for webinars. Good one, Kristen, good one. For me personally, I think anything longer than about 45 minutes to an hour is too long. Mm. I've been on a webinar where it's gone for two hours. Mm. And it has to be a really good webinar to keep me really engaged. Now, just another bit about that 40 minutes I don't want that 40 minutes to be first 20 minutes about the presenter. who I am, <laughs> five minutes of information, all been there. and then 10 minutes of upsell. And I'm sure I'm talking to everybody out there who's been in webinars and yeah. like that. I like a proportion. You mm. do need to do some slides at the beginning yeah. because you need to establish your credibility. Who is this person? What do they know about mm. what they're doing? Yeah. And you do want some slides at the end because there's your call to action, yeah. a roundup and summary. But the bulk of it you want is to be able to give people information. Mm. 
give it away because it'll come back to you. Yeah. And also just on that, Chris, and anyone else interested, um, if you look into the resource fo in the resource folder on the bottom right, um, there's a red back report in there. So last year, every year, and this is 2016, we did this report, we went out to um, everyone who's attended a webinar or an, a digital event and we asked some questions. And one of the questions in there refers to duration. That's broken up per industry. So um, in the government sector, within the not-for-profit sector and also in the corporate sector what their preferred duration is as well as some other research so feel free to take a look at that and download that now um, that's all the questions please keep them coming because we're loving these yeah. and it is increasing that engagement and that two-way yes. communication so I love questions yeah and even if you didn't ask them I just make them up for Trish anyway so there's another <laughs> little trick um, that's okay. well, I, yeah. that. I love questions it means I've got interaction it means people are listening exactly um, so you know just following on from what we were just talking about then really the online side of things so what is the difference between presenting in person and online and we've covered a bit of that but then also are those, do you have those skills, those presentate, uh, presenting to an audience skills that can be transferred online? Absolutely. How's that all work? Absolutely. Look, there is a difference between presenting in person yep. and presenting online. When you're doing it online, you do have some restrictions. Mm. If you're doing purely webinars, which is just behind you're behind the slides and you're talking over those slides, yep. then the only thing that you've got, and I'll go into a little bit more shortly, mm. is your voice. Yep. and the slides that you produce. If you're doing a online presentation which has got some videos or a webcast as we're doing mm. now which is part interview, part slides, then you can then use other things that you do when you're doing presenting offline. And those other things are your eyes and we'll talk about those, your eyes, your body language. Mm. Now this is a slide of me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is me doing one of my webinars. Yeah. And I've popped this in so people can realise that you can do this anywhere. You mm. don't have to have huge, humongous, humongous, brilliant, expensive equipment. Mm. I don't. I have two screens because I find that easier to work with. Yep. And I have a headset which you can just make out there with a microphone. Mm. And my good cup of tea because that helps get me through the whole thing. Well, it's preparation, thing. right? <laughs> it goes all the way back to preparation. And what I've got there is a webinar of my slides. Yep. And I can run that uh, very easily. What I've got in my speaking skills to run mm -hmm. that is my voice, mm. basically, and how I've put my slides together. So the quality of my slides to ensure that they keep people's attention, that I'm not too much writing on it, yep. that it... Uh, can be easily understood and then my voice which is the main thing you've got on a webinar mm. to ensure that I'm not speaking so fast that you can't understand a word that I'm going to say and making you so tired and exhausted that you're going to leave me alone. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> or speaking so slowly mm. or mumbling or not being heard. Yeah. And speaking is one of your public speaking skills that you mm. use offline or online. Yep. And the four things that you can do are what are portrayed here. Your rate, your pitch, your volume and your pause. Those are the things that you can use to make your voice a powerful connection. Mm. You've only got to listen, for example. Let's go to the Melbourne Cup oh, first day and yeah. Tuesday. If you're not down at the Melbourne Cup and you're listening to it, you haven't got a TV, that radio announcer has you in the palm of his mm. hand. He takes you through that race. And what he's changing is his rate, his pitch, his volume and his pause yep. to keep your attention. So when you're doing a pure webinar, when you've just got slides and you are speaking behind it, mm. you need to be really, really sure about your voice. You need to be aware of the pauses. Uh -huh. You need to pause. Pause is golden. Yeah. Because it allows people to think about what you've just said. But not for too long, right? Not for too long. Okay. If you Good. pause too long, someone's going to go to sleep. Yep. And also just on that, um, as a presenter, when you are actually speaking, and some people might not want to do this, but what are your thoughts on recording your presentation and then listening to yourself afterwards? It's something I would recommend. Yeah? Okay. I recommend either always recording and listening because it gives you an idea what sort of voice you've got. Mm. Some people's voices are naturally fast, yep. which means you've got to slow down a bit. Some are a little bit slower, which means mm. you need to actually make sure that you speed up a bit. Some have got very soft voices. Mm. And that means you then need to make sure 
you want to speak a bit louder. Yeah. And some have got so many loud voices that they boom and you can't hear everything. Yeah. So you want to be doing it. And you won't mm. know that unless you get some feedback from someone who's listening to you yep. or you listen to yourself. And I also say the same thing when you're presenting. Video yourself mm -hmm. and watch it. It's scary. It's quiet. Oh, my gosh, people, it's scary. It's very daunting, isn't oh, it? My, you don't know how I felt. The first time I actually saw myself on video, I thought, no way, this person is not going to be doing too well. We're overcritical about ourselves. Mm. So step back, give yourself a break. You're better than you think. That negative self-talk, isn't that it? That negative self-talk. Yeah. Now I get how your presentation is coming back around. <laughs> it's all making sense. Yeah, it's that negative self-talk. Yeah. Sit back. So, yeah, it is a very good idea. When we're doing online and videos, this is where I was saying you've got pure webinars, it's just your voice mm -hmm. and your slides. But when we actually go into online, where we might be going to be doing some videos with that online, so it could be online training, but mm -hmm. people are now doing a lot of online courses and putting them up and they do some videos yep. of that. It could be webcasts like we're doing mm -hmm. now, or it could be just a pure video that you want to do, some information videos that you're going to put up on YouTube or mm -hmm. wherever you're going to host them. This is where the skills that you have as a speaker come into being included because the eye contact, you still want to talk to people when you're doing it online. Mm. You want to be able to look straight down that lens and talk to the people out there. And this is where people get daunted because I know people who are really good speakers with a live audience mm. that can often freeze up mm. when they're put behind a camera yep. because they've lost that, that, that audience. Mm. They don't know how, where to look. My tip there is you just look down and you have a conversation with that person like they're the only person that you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. And then you need to add some body language and gestures. Wow. Yay. Because I could sit here or I could stand doing a video and I could stand like a poker. Mm. However, it's really not going to make that emotional connection. Yeah. And we need to make an emotional connection because that's where we get that passion across. Yeah. So I'm not saying you have to be a demented robot and do amazingly humongous amounts of loads of gestures. Mm -hmm. Be natural. But you do want to put some gestures in there, some bit of movement, because movement keeps people's attention on you. Exactly. So just quickly, we've got a few minutes left and I really want to cover, I know this could be an entire presentation on its own, storytelling. Now we've heard a lot about it. There's people who actually specialise in storytelling these days. So what is so powerful about storytelling and how can we use this as presenters? Stories are what connects us to our audience. Mm. We all have stories. We have stories hidden inside us, personal stories, business stories. Why you started your business, why you're so passionate about it. They are stories and people connect. We've got research that has told us that people are attracted to stories because we're social creatures. We relate mm. to it. In fact, there is research that has proven that there's a little switch in our brain. Mm. And as soon as someone starts telling a story, that switch turns on and we sit up and think, oh, really? I've got to listen. Yeah. Actual research that's been done. I actually believe it goes back to our hunters and gatherers days. Mm. Because when we had those days without videos, without TV and books and everything, mm. the storyteller was the most important person in that. Mm. And they took the stories down and we are now well, clued in to hearing a story mm. because we need to listen. Your story's got to take your audience on a journey. It's got to be a story. If you're going to share a story, you want to take them from here through that to there. Just think about the stories you heard as a child. Mm. You know, we had the hero, we had the heroine, we had the pain that was happening, the things they had to do to get through that pain, and then, wow, mm. the amazing things that happened. Well, you break that down to your business, yep. your message, the pain that your message and what you do that helps with people. Mm. How you can help it, so you take them through that story, then take them to the transformation. You use that to get people to where you want and them to be. And that's memorable, isn't it? People will remember stories. Yeah. And emotion. Yeah. yeah. You need to put that emotion. People will remember it. For example, usually I start my presentations with a bit of a story about who I am. Mm. We went straight into it today because we had a lot to get through. But my story, if I were to tell you that I'm an introvert, when I left school, I did not want to speak. Mm. 
I would never, if you ask any of my school friends and they saw me now on a webcast, yeah. getting up and speaking, they would not believe you. So my story is my journey. Mm. How did an introvert and a perennial wallflower get to sitting here speaking mm. with Sarah, absolutely enjoying and having fun? That's my story. So you want it to be interesting and not boring. Which you're definitely in. not. <laughs> it's for your audience and not for yourself. Mm. So when you pick out from your stories things that are going to relate. Remember what I said at the beginning? What's your aim? What's your goal? Who are you talking to? Who your niche is? Mm. So this is where you pick out bits of your story that relates to them. And that's why I so say you've got to research what mm. real people want. And then you do the who, what, where, when and how and why. And that's mm. where you can bring your stories in. Excellent. And, you know, what is the one thing that many people forget when they're faced with speaking or presenting? And, I, you know, one thing that can help us, key takeaway. Yeah, key takeaway. Do you know what people remember that you are a subject matter expert? Mm. In any field, whoever's listening out there, you know it. And you have to believe that mm. up here and you need to believe it in here. When you believe that, then you are powerful. Along with that then comes, you can be yourself. I love this, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Let that shine through. It, I've been my 20 years of speaking mm. and training. In every radio show I do, I ask people this one question, what's the top characteristic of a speaker? Mm. Invariably, in about 90%, and if it's not the top, it's the second, it's authenticity. Mm -hmm. It's being genuine. It's letting people see who you are, mm. the passion inside your heart, and the message you want to send. It's interesting um, in the Redback Report in there, um, we always ask people, you know, about the presenter and what makes a great presenter. And passion and enthusiasm always outweigh knowledge or expertise. And I think if someone's passionate and they're really on there and they're really authentic and you want to listen to them, half the time it doesn't matter what they're saying, does it? Well, well I'd, it like does. Some, I, I'd like to have a little bit of information in there, but really it doesn't. But they could be talking about any topic, Absolutely. couldn't they? They can yeah. hold you in the palm of their yeah. hand if they're genuine. And I always say to my mentoring clients, the audience will forgive you a lot hmm. if you let people see how authentic and genuine you are. Yep. All the techniques and strategies and things that I've been talking about here, that adds the polish yep. to you. Great. Um, so what I want to do, I just want to, I know we've got a few minutes left, so yep. conscious of time. I want to get to your call to action because obviously you've got a lot of expertise in this and I'm pretty sure we've just touched the top of the iceberg right now. Um, a lot of organisers out there, a lot of presenters out there. How can we know more? How can we actually get to the point where we are comfortable, we don't have fear and we want to get up and present? Okay. Well, firstly, I've got a, a freebie for you. Yep. You can go to tryshell.com.au, yep. download that free report. It's 10 free tips for improving your presentation. Mm -hmm. So it covers some of the things we've been talking about. I would love to have a discussion with you. If you want to see how you can leverage your business, either personal business, business that you're working mm -hmm. with, or corporation that you're in, and add speaking communication to do it online, in person, through webinars, 15-minute Skype discovery session. So just send me an email, mm. info at Trishell, and we can book it in and we can have a discussion about how we can work with you so that you can use and share the message you have and your stories. Excellent. Um, and I'd also advise people to complete the survey um, on the feedback tab as well because that also allows us to improve. We can pass that feedback on to Trish. And the way that we've created the survey might also help you in terms of how you would like to receive feedback for your next event, whether you are a presenter or an organiser. So we don't have any more questions coming through at the moment. Um, so thank you for everyone who did submit those questions. But I'm sure if anyone does have anything, they can contact you once the event is over. Is is that correct? Absolutely. I'd be absolutely happy. There's that email yep. there, that info at Trishell. You could even send your questions. Yep. And people, I'm all over Facebook. Just search for me. Yep. Look for the purple lady. 
found Put her. the words try Sean, Trish Springsteen, and you can even connect with me there and put your questions there. Excellent. And also just a reminder that we will be sending a recording of this event out within 48 hours. Within that, we will contain links to the information that Trish is willing to provide you and we'll also provide the recording, supporting documentation and some key takeaways as well. So thank you so much for Trish, uh, for you joining us today, Trish. It's been amazing. Happy birthday as well. Thank you. I hope it's been a highlight. Oh, look, I love sharing my message. Yeah. I get really passionate, as you might have gathered. Yes. And it's been an absolute delight to be able to be here, yep. share my passions, share my message, and hope that you all share your passion and your message. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for joining our Business Skills Series. And if you have any questions on today's event or future events, or perhaps you want to start running your own digital events, please feel free to let us know. Thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.